Welcome back to the MD1 Program YouTube channel. So we, we are here for day two of the novel coronavirus updates. So again, we're going to be here with you folks every single day until we get over this novel coronavirus as a group. Today, as yesterday, as most days going forward, I feel very confident that we are going to get over this, that people are going to get back to work and we are going to resume normal socialization and everything about society will go back to normal. This is just a hump that we have to get through together. There's lots of things going on. As I said yesterday, we're going to try and focus as much as we can on facts and giving you the right information. Our group is not going to place any blame, not going to say what was not done well. We are moving forward together to try and get the best outcome for all of us as a society and focus on scientific information. Now things here could change on a daily basis, sometimes more than once in a day. Please send comments, ask your questions, tell your friends to subscribe to the MD1 uh, YouTube channel so we can get the right information out there. By chance, if we say something that you don't think is right, we want to know right away because we are very focused on getting the right information to everybody as soon as possible. So I want to focus first on PPE. PPE is personal protective equipment. So PPE is what we use as healthcare professionals to protect ourselves as well as the patient so neither group gets a blood or any body substance or any respiratory droplets transmitted from one person to another. Like I said yesterday, an N95 mask just means 95% of particles are filtered through the mask. And it's 95% of small particles, it's 0.3 microns, so it's a very small particle. So still, a small amount gets through. Sure, there are shortages of some of these masks and some of these gloves and some of these gowns. So I think it's very important to save some of this stuff for the people on the front line, police, fire, and EMS. We need to do everything we can to keep police, fire, and EMS healthy as possible. So if you have a stockpile in your house because you got nervous and want to have crates of N95 masks, bring them to your local first aid squad, your local hospital, your local paramedic unit, your local police department. This is really important. We don't want to have a shortage of, of stuff for these guys who are on the front line. We need to keep them as healthy as possible uh, for as long as possible. So PPE. So PPE would be several items. One would be your gloves. One would be your face mask, which would be either an N95 mask or a surgical mask. And one would be some goggles. And then we would have a gown. And then we would have some shoe coverings. Once a medical provider puts on gloves and a face mask, such as an N95 or a surgical mask with goggles, they become low risk. Specifically, for the N95 mask, that should be worn anytime somebody comes into contact with any respiratory droplets, anytime somebody comes into contact with an airway, whether they're suctioning a patient, whether they're intubating a patient, anything near the airway, there must be an N95 mask. Now, if you're not near the airway, there's a CDC recommendation currently that you can switch to a surgical mask, and this has actually been studied. So they, when they compared surgical masks versus N95 masks, as long as people weren't near airways in general, that the risk of getting particles through to contact somebody who was a healthcare professional was minimum. Let's talk for a minute about surgical masks, because that's what a lot of people are wearing out in the community as they walk around. So I'm going to tell you that's not the best idea. And here's why. There was a big study which showed that if the average person is walking around in the community with a simple surgical mask, they tend to touch their face, their mouth, more often than if they don't have a surgical mask. So right now, we do not recommend routinely wearing surgical masks if you're not routinely contacting people within six feet. It doesn't really make sense. And in fact, it can make any viral transmission even higher. This is very, very important to remember. So let's talk about our people on the front lines and let's talk about the best PPE for them. Certainly, if you come into contact with anybody with a fever or with a respiratory illness, such as a cough, such as sneezing, um, or who's having trouble breathing, then you need to have full PPE. Now, if you have no shortage, that would mean an N95 mask, that would mean goggles, that would mean gloves, that would mean a gown, and if possible, shoe covers as well. All that would be necessary. So what if you come into contact with somebody who doesn't have any of those things? Maybe you get called because somebody has an ankle sprain. Maybe you get called because somebody just has some knee pain. Well, those patients are a little bit different. 
So now as an EMS provider, you walk up to the patient and you know that their chance of actively having COVID-19 at this point is less likely, but it's not zero. They certainly could be what's called a viral shedder, which means they have no symptoms, but they're still shedding the virus. Should you wear PPE to that patient? So I'm going to tell you, here's a recommendation that the CDC does not routinely give us for that patient with the ankle sprain. We all know that there's social distancing or social mitigation that's going on, which is a current recommendation to be less than, uh, greater than six feet from the next person. But I'm going to tell you that you can wear a surgical mask and gloves to that patient, although it's not currently required by the Center for Disease Control. That's a personal decision to make. 